Someone is at the front door. Someone is at the front door. Someone is at the front door. So I was totally done having unsynchronized audio alerts in my house, especially when I was leveraging these Google Home devices, which I couldn't stand in my Nest doorbell. When somebody came to the front door, I, I didn't know where the hell the sound was coming from. I couldn't take it anymore. So I finally had some time and decided to standardize on a new system leveraging Raspberry Pis and external speakers in my house. The next problem is, what system do I actually use to power them? While having a single speaker playing an alert is great, the holy grail of audio alerts is having complete synchronization across all speakers. You're probably thinking, Roger, isn't this already possible with systems such as Google or Sonos? If so, why are you reinventing the wheel? While those solutions do exist, they all have their own issues. The biggest issue of Google Home speakers is they require internet connectivity, even when playing local audio files. For audio alerts, you don't have to rely on the internet or Google acting up for it to work. If you actually haven't watched my first video on why I'm dumping my Google Home speakers, be sure to check it out. On the Sonos side, overall, the solution's a lot better than Google. These speakers are definitely more on the expensive side and you need to buy into their entire ecosystem, but overall, a reasonable choice, as they can operate without internet access and play local files. So I'm here to tell you there is a DIY solution to achieve fully synchronized audio alerts while allowing speakers to also be used for streaming music. Like I said, this is going to be a two-part video and I've narrowed it down to two different options based on research and first-hand experience. In this first video, I'm going to provide an overview of the two architectures I'm testing out. And in the second video, I'm going to let everybody know which one I've actually chosen and provide a more detailed look on the nitty-gritty tech behind it. So when choosing a solution for my synchronized audio alert system, I had four success criteria that the solution had to meet. First, I wanted perfectly synchronized audio that's stable. My previous setup, like I mentioned with Google Home, works sporadically, and that's really just not acceptable for a system that will primarily be used for alerts. Secondly, I wanted the solution to play music from my phone via AirPlay. I have a whole separate audio file grade speaker set up for listening to music locally, so I just want these speakers to be for casual playback for me and my wife. The solution must also seamlessly override any currently playing audio files and resume it when the alert is finished. Third, I have like an extensible solution that's modular that can run in different hardware types. No vendor lock-in definitely makes things harder, but it's more open to change and repurposing the hardware in the future. Lastly, the solution must be completely offline with no dependencies on cloud services. Even though we can do synced audio for the Google devices, the devices need to be online for the alerts to actually execute locally. What a joke. So when I first saw the Logitech Media Server GUI, I thought it looked like something from 1995. It looked like honestly total crap. And I initially gave up on it until I started doing some more research and I found out there was actually an improved GUI using what we call the material skin. Honestly made it extremely, extremely nice. Um, just made everything a lot easier to find, just felt actually very, very polished. So once I found this and actually played around with it a lot more, um, I really, really loved it. And you can see here the now playing screen, which is awesome. So I'm running my Logitech Media Server inside a Docker container on my physical Linux host. As part of my Logitech Media Server setup, I have three different speakers that are part of the system. One in my living room, bedroom, and office. What you're seeing here is I'm actually leveraging a an, an free add-on for Logitech Media Server called the Group Players add-on. So that actually takes um, any group of speakers we have and actually creates a virtual speaker out of all of them that allows synchronized audio across all the speakers that we choose. Now, if you're familiar with Logitech Media Server, you know that it has built-in synchronization of all the speakers already. Um, so I can actually take all these speakers and synchronize them all together. The downside to that is though, if, I, if once I actually put these speakers in a synchronization group, if I actually go to actually stream music to one of them, and I just wanted to, uh, for example, play on the living room speaker, it's actually gonna start playing on all the rest automatically. So leveraging the group players add-on, we basically have a whole separate entity that we can actually stream music to um, if we do actually want it to appear on all the speakers, not, not just one. Next, I'm leveraging the ShareTunes 2 plugin. This basically automatically takes any speaker that we have inside Logitech Media Server 
and it exposes it to iOS devices as an AirPlay target. So inside my iPhone, if I actually go into, for example, my YouTube music app, I'll actually see all these different entities as um, AirPlay targets where I actually can stream music to. So when it comes to Home Assistant integration, um, there's a built-in integration inside Home Assistant called Squeezebox integration. So Squeezebox is another name for a Logitech media server, so you're not getting confused. And basically allows um, to, for us to send native API calls using Home Assistant to Logitech media server. So I'm doing this, for example, if somebody comes to my front door, I'm actually sending a, um, a command to Logitech media server to play a specific um, file that announces somebody's at the front door to my all speakers group. Now, the great thing about this setup is that, for example, if I'm playing music in my bedroom and that will actually alert happens, there's logic that's actually going to go in behind the scenes to actually stop that music from playing on the bedroom speaker and actually send that alert through. Now, going on the other side, the actual clients that are receiving these um, music and audio alerts are my Raspberry Pi devices. So each of these Raspberry Pi devices actually has an additional add-on card that looks like this, and it's from a company called Hi-Fi Berry. Uh, the great thing about these add-on cards is it allows us to leverage um, an output other than our built-in stereo port, such as RCA inputs, um, outputs, um, and this basically allows um, for additional better audio quality for the speakers um, connected to our Raspberry Pi. Um, also on the Raspberry Pis, I'm leveraging the hi Berry operating system. Now the great thing about this is it basically has our Squeezebox client already actually built into this operating system, so we don't have to install any additional software. Leveraging hi Berry OS also has the built-in drivers for our hi fi Berry devices, so if we're leveraging this, it's just an additional step we don't have to worry about. While Snapcast has a web GUI, it's really not something you're going to use outside the initial configuration and troubleshooting. With Moppity, there's actually no built-in GUI, and we have to download third-party modules to actually have a web interface for controlling it if we want to play music too. So pretty much a bare-bones system when it comes to actual um, interaction with it. When it comes to SharePlay Sync, which is the AirPlay piece, there's really no GUI at all. We're basically modifying configuration files in, in our terminal to make sure everything functions appropriately. So our second architecture, unlike the first one with Logitech Media Center, is actually uh, encompassing three separate different software products to make the solution work. First is Moppity. Moppity is a Python application that basically runs in the background in the terminal. And in the case of this architecture, it's actually going to allow um, API access from Home Assistant for allow us to, to actually stream audio files in the event that we have an alert coming in. Next is Snapcast. So Snapcast is a multi-room client server audio application that basically allows the, the audio stream sending to different devices to be fully synchronized. So in our case here, we're running Snapcast inside a Docker container on our Linux server, and we actually have the Snapcast clients installed on all our different Raspberry Pi devices. Lastly, we're running SharePoint Sync, um, also in Docker containers, and actually each of these icons here is actually a whole separate Docker container. Uh, so for my iPhone, we'll basically have the ability to either stream to all the different speakers or individual speakers, such as the one in the living room, bedroom, or office. So going back to Snapcast, really it's important to understand the architecture. So Snapcast has the concepts of groups. So we have this overarching group here called our living room group. And basically what we do inside Snapcast is we assign what speakers we want to be in that group. And then we also assign what we call a, an audio stream to our group. So an audio stream is basically, for example, in this case here, our living room Air SharePoint Sync container is actually intercepting audio from our iPhone and then streaming it to a file that's actually on the local Linux file system. This is not any old file, it's actually called a, a FIFO file, first in, first out. It's a special type of file that allows multiple processes to either read or write audio to it, or any type of data in, in this case. So what's basically happening in this example is from my iPhone, I'm streaming um, audio, um, to this SharePoint Sync container, 
It's actually writing to this stream2.fifo file. And then Snapcast basically also has, is actually reading that exact same file and then it's streaming that audio file for whatever speaker we have configured in the case just the living room. So you're probably thinking, we're talking about um, you know, synchronized audio, why do we care about just streaming audio to one speaker? Well, you know, definitely there's gonna be cases where you're only going to stream audio to one speaker and sometimes we're going to stream it to others. So we'll see in the following example here why this, um, this even we're doing to one speaker, why it really makes sense to, to use this solution. So going on to our next architecture here, um, this is actually uh, how it looks like when we're actually setting an alert uh, through Home Assistant. So leveraging the Mopity integration, we're basically sending an API call to Mopity. We're basically saying, hey, we're gonna play an alert for let's say, for example, somebody comes to the front door. Mopity is configured with um, specific audio out configuration. And in this case, where it's basically saying is, hey, our audio out um, is actually this stream 0fifo file. So Mopity also has access to the local Linux file system for this FIFO file here. So basically what's gonna happen is at that point is um, for some method, in the case of my example, I'm actually just hitting the Snapcast REST API um, through an automation inside Home Assistant. So we're basically saying, hey, even if we're playing music on all our speakers or maybe even just one of them, we're going to change the stream attached to this group inside Snapcast. And instead of playing whatever audio we're streaming from our iPhone here, we're actually gonna change it to the stream from Mopity, which actually has our alert from Home Assistant. We're going to play that on all our different speakers. So the great thing about this is, not only are we seamlessly taking audio that was currently you know, played from our iPhone, we're instantly changing it over to our alert, all those alert files being sent to our three different speakers are gonna be fully synchronized. So in the next example here, it's basically just saying, hey, um, instead of actually streaming audio to one of our speakers, we're actually going to stream it to another AirPlay target called All Speakers. So All Speakers is configured to output audio to our stream 1.fifo file. So leveraging the same concept, we're basically sending um, API calls to Snapcast saying, hey, we're starting to play music on all of our speakers. Can you please change the output in all our different groups to stream one? So I hope everybody enjoyed this video and got a better understanding of what I'm trying to achieve with my synchronized audio alert system in my house. In part two of this video, I'll talk about which of the two solutions I actually standardized on, either Logitech Media Server or Mopity, Snapcast, and SharePlay Sync, give a demo of it working in action, and talk about the pros and cons of each of the different solutions. Until next time, this is Roger's Tech Talk.